as you've been learning about ecosystems, you've been learning about the different relationships in an ecosystem and the predator-prey relationship. So let's take a little bit of time today to see what kind of information we can get off of a graph about these predator and prey relationships. We can use graphs to look at the predator-prey relationship in an ecosystem. So remember that the predator is the organism that eats the prey and the prey is the organism that gets eaten by the predator. So I wanna show you the graph showing the population sizes of the predator and prey in an ecosystem. So in our graph, we have the time, which is usually in years, and the population sizes of the predator prey or the number of organisms in the area. Let's start by looking at the prey. The prey numbers are going to increase when the conditions are right. So when there's plenty of food and water and the predator level is low, their number uh, increases because the reproduction rates are higher than they are getting um, eaten off by the predators. Then the population is going to peak and it peaks because of an increase in the number of predators. So think about it this way. Um, there's plenty of food and the predators are able to eat as much as they want. So their numbers are going to increase as their population increases. The prey population peaks and starts to drop back down. Then the predators start to get less food. So their population is going to peak and drop back down. Both of the predator and prey populations will continue with the cycle. So some things I really want you to be able to see in this graph is that both the predator and preys have the same patterns of peaks and troughs or peaks and valleys. There is more prey than there are predators. And this is because of the inefficient energy transfer throughout a, a food chain in an ecosystem. And the predator graph lags a little behind the prey graph. So the prey graph will start to increase first, and then the predator graph will. Same thing for the decrease. We'll see the prey decrease first, followed by the predator. The predator-prey relationship is really important to remember that they are dependent upon each other. So a change in one will result in a change in the other. Now you have the information you need to be able to make a predator-prey relationship graph or read a predator-prey relationship graph or answer questions about a predator-prey relationship graph. So I hope all of this will be able to help you keep going and keep growing. Bye!